Friday. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's weather chat. I'm meteorologist Timmy Albertson here with you guys. So we are tracking some snow right now across parts of the Upper Plains, and some of that snow is going to track its way into the Upper Midwest, maybe bringing a few inches of snowfall accumulation to some areas. Some much-needed snowfall, given how quiet this winter has been across these very regions that I mentioned. And then we could be seeing another system as we head towards the weekend that might also try to produce maybe some snow there. Now, we'll talk a little bit about that one, but we'll mainly focus on the activity for the night tonight. So, with that being said, let's take a look at our good friend here, the radar imagery. So, we got winter weather advisories that are in effect across a good portion of southern North Dakota and northern South Dakota. Boy, that's a directional tongue twister, isn't it? All right, as well as in the central Minnesota, you can see how this winter weather advisory kind of expands a little bit in terms of its size coverage uh, to pretty much encompass most of Wisconsin and then parts of central Michigan. Now, the reason for that is because probably going to be a little bit more of some moisture that's going to get kind of uh, caught up with the system to maybe give them a little bit more snowfall once you go east of Minneapolis. But all things considered, the system itself is not necessarily a, a, a particularly strong one. As a matter of fact, it's just some moisture that's kind of uh, trapped and getting itself forced out of the Rocky Mountains and into the Upper Plains. In fact, right now we can see some of that snow falling out around the Aberdeen area in South Dakota. Temperatures there uh, to the uh, north, back in North Dakota, are actually sitting in the lower 20s, a little bit more mild now, further down to the south. So with that in mind, Let's take a look here at the latest weather map and have somewhat of a visual of what's going on. So we have this area of high pressure up across parts of Canada, and that area of high pressure, as we've talked about before, these guys are dominant. We see this little kind of extension of this high pressure down around Lake Winnipeg out in Manitoba, and this is kind of creating a little bit of a pressure gradient here. So we have some moisture that's currently being forced in some of the upper levels out of the Rocky Mountains, and it's kind of tracking its way to the south and to the east, kind of following somewhat of this pressure gradient. Now, that being said, we tend to see these systems uh, sometimes during the winter time, generally kind of quick moving systems, but they do produce sometimes a couple of inches of snowfall. And that's what's likely going to be around uh, in some of these areas, like around the Aberdeen area, maybe about two to four, or even maybe three to five wouldn't be out of the question. Same thing back in Minneapolis, but it also has a very tight gradient with it. And that is parts of northern Minnesota probably not going to be seeing much in the way of snowfall from this system. So as a matter of fact, if we were to take a look here at one of the uh, nice little forecast models here. We can kind of see this here a little bit more graphically, and this is one of the uh, uh, short-range models that we use in meteorology. Again, not necessarily the best in terms of its visual appearance, but it is not any less good. All right, let's take a look here. So again, as we go our way through the evening hours, we can see that moisture kind of being forced its way out. Again, this is looking uh, about later this evening. We can start to see some of that snow filtering its way into Minnesota. Kind of that more maybe moderate snow is going to still be a little bit further back, but eventually it will catch up and it'll kind of push its way into central Minnesota. Now, with that being said, and that's kind of more or less at least where the maximum snowfall totals, uh, you know, in these areas are going to be. It's kind of just a narrow little band here. But again, could be about two to four to three to six inches of snow, depending upon the exact temperature layout here and your exact location. But overall, it's not a very wide, uh, uh, you know, system here. We're not looking at, uh, you know, uh, snowfall of that magnitude across the entire part of Minnesota. No, it's just going to be kind of right in this little narrow area here. And again, that's part of the reason why that winter weather weather advisory, if we zoom out, is kind of narrow as it goes its way through Minnesota. Nonetheless, let's take a look here, at least kind of what we're going to be expecting as we go a little bit more forward is that system begins to pick up a little bit more moisture. And that gradient kind of relaxes a little bit, and so we're able to see that moisture kind of maybe just extending just a little bit more here. And you can see how it kind of filters its way out across I mean, most of Minnesota and Wisconsin as we head into tomorrow, as we head into late tonight, and then eventually going into early tomorrow morning. Now, by this point, though, keep in mind that the heavier snow is probably still going to be down to the south here, closer to where that rain snow line is actually going to be. Uh, and again, kind of a wet snow there. And this isn't going to be probably a heavy snow across northern Minnesota or extreme northern Wisconsin, but maybe a dusting, if not maybe an inch or two, especially once you get a little bit further away from the lake. Nonetheless, you can see how 
We'll continue to watch that system as it tracks its way. It begins to kind of expand a little bit again. We're going to pick up a little bit more moisture as it goes through Wisconsin, through the remainder of tomorrow morning, and then eventually into Michigan, especially as we go into tomorrow afternoon. And then heading into uh, the late afternoon hours, that system kind of basically begins to interact with yet another system that will be developing down south. And it's looking like we could be seeing some rain showers across the Ohio River Valley going back down into the deep south. However, that is not it for this system. So that's just kind of a synoptic view here of what's going on. Now, naturally, as I mentioned, there will be some decent snowfall accumulations around the Minneapolis area, going back over towards Eau Claire, and then heading into maybe just north of the Madison area. Oh, but I said about three to six inches of snowfall. And again, you know, not necessarily anything, uh, you know, unusual for this area. A little bit late in the season. But then again, keep in mind, folks, that uh, sometimes, you know, in some areas, sometimes uh, you can get some pretty good snowstorms, uh, you know, late in the season. And even though we are technically already in meteorology spring, that happened back in uh, March 1st. Meteorology, we don't follow the astronomical spring. Uh, we follow the climatological spring, which is March 1st. Fun fact. Anyways, that being said, uh, places in the upper Midwest, even going back into some parts of New England, certainly still see plenty of winter weather through the month of March. Uh, for the most part, typically we see it kind of tapering off by, you know, obviously early April, but every now and then uh, there's always an exception. But that being said, that's kind of the setup for that, for this system here. So again, kind of a narrow band of snow, at least as it goes through the Dakotas and into central Minnesota, kind of widens out a little bit. And again, we'll probably see maybe good, you know, two to four inches of snowfall accumulation in some of the immediate surrounding areas. But as mentioned, it'll be kind of somewhat of a tight pressure, of a, of a tight gradient. In fact, I don't really don't like to, uh, you know, show, uh, you know, too many models here because again, uh, you know, it gives people kind of the uh, wrong impression a little bit. But if we were to go ahead and flip over, and for those of you who like to do a little bit of forecast modeling on your own, uh, there are as many places where you can access uh, forecast models there and, and kind of take a little bit of a look at what I mean by maybe some of that narrowness there. Now, again, don't always go exactly with the models, folks, unless you, you're a meteorologist like myself and you know how to, you know, deal with those and you have it also an understanding of what's going on. Uh, but again, you would see kind of a narrow band, you know, right about that goes from right here from Aberdeen down into parts of uh, Wisconsin of about, like I said, two to four, maybe three to six inches of snow or some heavier bands could set up. Things will then quiet down as we go our way into tomorrow evening. In fact, we could be seeing some mostly clear skies. That could bring a return of single-digit temperatures across some parts of the upper Midwest. So a little bit below average for this time of the year. But again, given how this winter is being, we need it. All right. What about after that? Well, if we were to take a look at some of the frontal, uh, if we were to take a look at some of the front maps here, and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of peek on over to the WPC's maps here, uh, because they'll give us a, a little bit more of a somewhat of kind of a, a a better visualization, I guess I should say. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. All right, they'll give us a little bit of a visualization here, and again, we can see how as that little you know, moisture kind of gets forced up, that little surface low tracking its way through. And then we'll see that high pressure kind of briefly take over as we go into uh, Friday night going into Saturday morning. But then we're going to see yet another disturbance that's going to make its way through. And this one is probably going to be a little bit on the stronger side. And it has a lot more moisture to work with as coming off the Pacific coast. And that could be actually bringing yet again some more snow across parts of the upper Midwest. Once again, maybe on the order of about three to six inches of snow, depending upon how things set up with maybe some higher amounts back into, you know, uh, elevation things. We're not going to go into the specifics tonight. But that's not where this thing ends here. So let's go ahead and we'll flip a little bit more forward. And again, things kind of lining up overall with the uh, with, with, with the general forecast here. But what we'll do is we'll uh, take a look here and we'll go a little bit further. And I do want to show you, you know, kind of what in general we're expecting as we head our way uh, towards the second half of the weekend is take a look at this low pressure by the time we get towards uh, Sunday morning. Pretty decent uh, size low pressure here, very tight pressure gradient. Again, we got that high pressure still hanging out up towards the north. And again, that moisture kind of getting forced through here. And we're likely going to be seeing, again, kind of a decent sized system. Now, this time of the year, as opposed to generally during winter, where we sometimes will get severe weather events, uh, typically once we start getting to the late winter, 
sometimes those severe weather events are going to be a little bit more pronounced with these type of systems. And that is probably going to be the case uh, as we go in towards Sunday and possibly again into the day on Monday. We see here a little dry line kind of being indicated here. Again, that colder air rushing out of the mountains as it descends those higher mountains into the lower elevations. It begins to rapidly warm and it creates a hot and dry air mass here that to a degree sometimes kind of acts as a front. It is certainly the difference of air density uh, but uh, not technically truly a front, but it is, it acts like a front sometimes. And a lot of times it helps with, you know, the initiation of severe thunderstorms. Uh, it, it's just kind of a little bit of a trigger for them, more or less. Uh, you know, you can get some thunderstorms with cold fronts too. You get what I'm saying. All right, I'm just explaining to you what this symbol is right here. It's a dry line. And those are pretty fun to watch. We saw one about last week when we were taking a look at some of the weather maps. And, you know, we'll have to take a look at this one. Again, could be good. Uh, and these guys, let me tell you what, when I say dry air, I'm talking about dry air. We're talking about relative humidities in the single digits with temperatures that are very, very warm. Anyways, nonetheless, ample moisture from that thing. And then as we head into the day on Monday, take a look here. I'm expecting that thing is really going to kind of crank its way up towards the north here a little bit. In fact, on the upper level is what we actually have going on here. Too. We can kind of visualize it a little bit with uh, this particular model run here. Let's take a look. You can see as we go towards the end of the weekend, we still have a little bit of that trough kind of flat lines a bit. And then here comes this system off the Pacific coast. And again, pretty well defined. And look at that. You can see how it kind of lines everything up here. That low pressure going to track kind of quickly up towards the north. And again, that too could be producing some decent snowfall accumulation. Still a little too early to go into a lot of detail about that part of the forecast, just simply because, uh, number one, we got to see how this current one plays out because that could have a little bit of an impact on the temperatures, especially if we can get that snow to really kind of hold on a little bit. So that could make things kind of fun. We also have to kind of keep in mind here the exact timing of everything and, you know, a lot of other things that are going to have to kind of situate. But for the most part, it's looking like we'll have this round of snow tonight going into the day tomorrow across parts of the upper Midwest and central Great Lakes. Then have a little bit of a break, and then we're going to quickly see that next system moving in. And again, as mentioned, that next system, maybe one that might try to hang around for a day or two, producing some pretty interesting weather. Again, severe weather will actually be a possibility in parts of the southern plains and then the deep south as we go into Sunday and Monday. So uh, that will be pretty interesting to kind of keep an eye on, too. So it looks like we're going to have ourselves maybe an active uh, second half of the weekend. So with that in mind, that's about it for today. Kind of a quick weather chat. How are you folks? Well, make sure you, uh, we'll, kind of, we'll take a look at this thing as we go through the weekend. Uh, maybe we'll talk more about it tomorrow evening, but until that time, keep enjoying that weather.